welcome to this bonus footage here of Beck's Bug Out Survivor. A little extra episode today because it is the birthday unwrapping in the woods. For the past few years I've been coming out and opening something probably camping related and it's exactly what I'm going to do. I want to put up a tarp first and a hammock, that's a clue. And then we'll open it up and see what it is and try it out. When I came in, I saw the white deer and he had his back to me, or she. And by the time I got the camera out and zoomed in just a second ago, gone. This is just going to afford me a little bit of privacy for the next few minutes while I do this. Albeit I have my new line on which is uh, the Daedalow Yellow. But I'm sick of tripping over them. And the actual ready of the unwrapping here. Marvel Superheroes. So as you've probably already guessed, this relates to my hammock. With this one, I have an SRL above me. It runs from one end of the hammock all the way to the other. It gives a dip in the hammock so I can get a diagonal lay. So without further ado, into the pack, get the gift, open it up, try it out. Wonder what it could be. Well, I actually chose it, so I know what it is. And this is it. This is a full windsock for the hammock. So in winter, it puts a barrier all the way around me. Now, a tarp does not do the same job as this. A tarp keeps the wind off, the rain off. This holds in the heat a lot more. So I'm not too sure how many degrees it adds, but you'll see in a minute if you've never seen a hammock sock. This one is by Dutch from Dutchware. It is full argon, which is a type of nylon, far better than uh, just nylon. I think it's Argon 90 and 90 will refer to its strength. There's also an Argon 67 which has fewer threads in it. A uh, little stuff sack for it there. And I'll need to open up one end of the hammock and thread this on. It opens up very wide on one end, so I should be able to get my hand in. It's vented, this is a mesh, and you can rotate that mesh so it's fully sealed. And a cinch toddle, let me get it on. Oh, 
got the foot end there's a little mitten hook which I can take somewhere onto this suspension and a little toddle to cinch it all up at the head end you can see it's all open apart from when I get in there this is the mesh bug screen and ventilation and this is a massive opening just pull on the cords here on the cinch toddle again which will draw all this area tight and I access it through a zip which runs the length of the hammock there and at the bottom it should afford enough room for the insulation to hang loose underneath in the form of an underquilt of course you can use pads I use underquilts for this I think this is going to be my winter setup because I have a hammock with a bug net for summer and summer quilts on it this will have my winter quilts on so hopefully there's going to be a generous gap here at the bottom so I'm not squashing the insulation and this is the Argon 90 and this is the breathable netted mesh ripstop Argon 90 it's resting up there on the ridge line so it keeps it off my face makes it a little more like a tent to a certain degree it blacks everything out so I should sleep a lot better there's plenty of ventilation and yet at the same time I need it to um, have an opposing effect on convection which is the heat lost from your underquilt from the atmosphere around you not the wind but the actual atmosphere and it will keep my underquilt a lot drier keep rain splashes off mud dirt anything like that because here in the UK this is winter and you don't get a picture postcard snow scene it's just cold wet and muddy so this ideal I do like this idea now the breather mesh here I can kind of roll underneath the hammock here and I have full enclosure and the crash zips as well so just give it a pull all comes undone now a while ago I did something similar to this because I all, always wanted a hammock sock and I thought of making one but that would have been quite a bit bulky uh, unnecessarily heavy as well because the Argon 90 here is so light so this is just from a camping kit a bit of wild camping uh, as where my stealth camping kit this wouldn't be in all this incredibly lightweight well if you're using it all winter like this it can stay on the hammock it's not a problem at all um, I'm gonna have to rethink how I'm gonna put the quilts on because usually I attach the quilts directly to the tarp and not the hammock because uh, it get better lift I'm gonna have to have a rethink about that so I'm going to have to do it the old fashioned way with this and connect the underquilt to the end of the hammock and try and pull lengthways to try and get lift upwards. I tend not to do that. I actually elevate from high corners so when I pull strings it lifts up. So I'm going to have to box clever with the underquilts but I'm not going to show that today. I'd rather get it all dialed in. 
but I'm going to play about with that mesh head end and see if I can just rotate it now. So I've got a view of the stars above if I haven't got the tarp up, which is sometimes in the snake skin. If it rains, I break open the snake skin and this comes over. So it's not waterproof. That is not what it's for. It's not a rain catcher. You still need your tarp. This is to minimize convection, the effect of the air between the ground and your backside where the quilts are, pulling that energy out of the quilt. By the time the energy runs out, you've had your good 12 hours sleep anyway. But this reserves a lot of that energy from escaping because it can't really go anywhere other than through the vent. So now I've got a 50-50 vent. I've got a window on this side and a window on the other side. I could look straight out here, but I've lost the zip because I've had to rotate it all around. So this hammock sock comes in two sizes, 11 foot and 10 foot. This is an 11 foot hammock with an SRL and I have space to spare. It also comes zipped and unzipped and the way you'd enter it with an unzipped hammock sock is through the entry point here. So I would need to somehow undo it all and get in that way. Definitely prefer the zip option. It's a little more money for the zip, not a lot. But the feeling of being able to get out quickly is what I like in a hammock. So it's going to take a bit of getting used to. My Dutch Army hoop bevy also felt a bit claustrophobic. I think this is going to be the same for the first couple of times, just while I figure out where everything is, how to find the zips quickly, how to find the cords quickly, how to do everything. I'm going to put a couple of day glow markers on the zips, but without the zip option, that's what you've got to do is pull it over you and toddle up on a drawstring. Um, it's not brilliant. It's not brilliant for maybe a tenner extra, 10 bucks extra, 10 quid extra. Go for the zip. Just going to grab a coffee. Don't go. So I filmed something, an overnight camp, and I used a wooby. And I draped it over my ridge line and went out for the night. And boy, it is so much warmer having something blocking either side of you like this does. So much warmer. Um, it gives you a nice feeling on the inside blocks the light so you can sleep in a little longer if that's the way you want to go about it and i really liked camping out with that wooby but it it was too heavy for my lightweight camping that i do i would use a wooby over the ridge line on surplus kit say with an army sleeping bag inside which I've made a homemade bomb pod for a pod and maybe a wooby over the ridge line but this is just for my lightweight camping I'm not sure if there was a bit of import on it because I've also bought Christmas presents for people and I don't know who the tax belongs to for the import I do have an option to keep all this together now I don't need to keep removing this each and every time. So I do have some other videos to come out before the night camp of this, unless I can jiddle things about a bit. But I'm off with this. Um, see what day is it today? Sunday. This time next week. If I can jiddle things about a bit, I'll film it next Sunday. 
and you can see it the Sunday after perhaps fingers crossed all being well so that'll be a night out with that the idea works because I took the wooby out and put that over the ridge line that was a good camp I enjoyed that one the thing I'm gonna have to get used to are where are the zips where are the toddles in the middle of the night if I have to move quickly I don't want to break it trying to get out of it so a lot of playtime for me with this that looked quite interesting because I kind of get out the left side of the hammock so I only have half a window of the netted mesh on my left shoulder I think if the zip was on the other side and I was to get out on the right side the mesh window is on both sides but um, like I said there's a lot of playing about with this to find these things out and I'm looking forward to it. So the birthday unwrapping in the woods. This is the Dutch Argon 90 hammock sock, zippered. You know all about it now. Really love this, always wanted one. It's a lot lighter than any of my homemade things I've ever done. And because this is a birthday gift, you're gonna have to explore the price of it yourself. But I'll give you a clue. It's under a hundred quid. So a good investment if you're going to get longevity from it, if you winter camp. Argon 90, incredibly strong. The outer shell of my underquilt is also Argon 90. And that is six or seven years old and it's like new. Next year's birthday unwrapping in the woods are big numbers. Numbers I'm not looking forward to. I don't really want to get to 30. 29 today, obviously. But, um, yeah, big numbers next year. Don't like it. And assuming I'm quite healthy for the next 10, 15 years, this is coming with me every winter. Obviously, you're still going to need your under quilts. This isn't a replacement for that. This isn't a replacement for the top. It's added protection, not full protection. I wished I'd have pulled the trigger on one of these a long time ago. Now, if you prefer a kind of a hybrid of a bug net and a sock, Dutch who made me this also does a full net version and you can use that for summer but I, like I said I have a hammock with full bug net when I got this in the post it came with um, the invoice and at the bottom Dutch himself from the company uh, at by road in best wishes Dutch I don't know if that was just for me for today or whether he signs everyone's like that um, but I'm sure he does watch YouTube just to see what other people are saying about his products I'm pretty sure he does small cottage industry not manufactured in mass Dutch is a hell of a nice guy easy to talk to easy to get along with he does answer his emails if you have any queries or he has staff to do it. Um, so if you're watching Dutch, I'm looking forward to taking this one out. And I'm sure it's going to be one of my favourite birthday presents. And I'm a big advocate of cottage industry, even if it's not in my own country. I like to support those kind of people because when you buy off the shelf it's not personal nobody cares who you are it, it's so impersonal so there you have it 
that is why Dutch's hammock stuff sack was uh, oversized. It must have been to accommodate the extras you can buy off him, such as the socks or the bug nets and things like that, because the hammock was also from Dutch. I used the Hexon 1.6 unnetted, and it's obviously unnetted because it's for winter use. Okay, I'm at the end of the track here and I'm going to wrap it up. But I don't think I'm going to get away with telling you I'm 27 anymore. So, uh, 29 today. Big numbers next year, the big 3 0. So, until next time, uh, you're not buying it, are you? Maybe that'll make me look a bit younger. Until next time, take care of yourself. See you out there, happy trails.